I pray that I may speak to you on the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. There's something very special about preaching here in August, when we all expect something relatively short and to the point, both in the liturgy and in the sermon. So I do hope what I'm about to say will fit the bill. Fundamentally, I'm going to be talking about being present in our relationships, regardless of the pressures. As some of you will know, I have just got back from some time away in Italy, and the family loved it. And me, well, I spent most of the time on the laptop, on Zooms and conference calls back to the office in London. To all intents and purposes, I might as well have been in the square mile like my normal working week as I sought to hit an aggressive deadline to get some business done. I had what can best be described as a working holiday with an emphasis on the former rather than the latter. Now, before people's hearts begin to bleed too much, let me just say this. This is very, very common in my line of work, to be at it seven days a week. And I knew that when I signed my first contract all those years ago. Second, I am fortunate to have a job at all, let alone to be able to fly abroad and stay in lovely places. And third, I did have a couple of wonderful, memorable moments on this trip with the family, made all the more special, perhaps, by the scarcity. So no, no pleas for pity. The violins can stay on hold that little bit longer. But this recent experience has made me reflect on the interplay between our professional lives and our private lives, working and Sabbath, work and holy rest. And I would bet that I'm not the only person to get that balance completely wrong more often than not. If you were to believe some newspapers, you'd get the impression that rather than being a nation of strivers, this is a nation of scroungers, with people taking out more than they put in. My sense, in fact, is that we're about to see the reverse of this. People putting an awful lot in, yet living standards will get harder. Aspirations will be harder to realize. And this brings all sorts of societal and intergenerational pressures. We're entering into what's been labeled a postmodern economic cycle. Higher inflation, higher interest rates, tighter financial conditions than the last 30 or 40 years. And getting that balance right between work and rest, between our jobs and our family lives is going to be harder still as more and more is demanded of us. Today's gospel, with Christ prioritizing relationships and reconciliation over everything, is a helpful corrective at this time of uncertainty. So why is it that we get the balance between work and rest so badly wrong so often? Well, clearly technology has made the world smaller, so we are always on. And another part of this answer is context. In my case, a large part of my drive and ambition is actually something close to paranoia. This perpetual fear that that which I cherish most might be taken away from me at any moment. And so often I have to remind myself that our faith is in the God who prioritizes relationship and relationality above all things. The God who says that we should not allow our possessions to possess us. The God who reminds us once again and again and again that the things that are most important are not things, but are love. This healing story is a timely reminder to us that Christ was focused on what brings about freedom that he was, therefore, hardest on the biblical literalists whose approach to scripture's limits, 
the interpretative and rhetorical space of the reader-listener. He was hardest on those with power who use their authority to exclude and to other people. In this healing act, he models a worshipping community in space that is open to teaching, open to preaching, open to encounter with God and brings welcome to the marginalised a place where we can be our truest selves. Instructively, the word he uses here to admonish hypocrites is more precisely actually actors, or more specifically still, those who wear masks. We are asked to be as close to our authentic selves as we possibly can be. Those of you who are aware of the African concept of Ubuntu, the paradoxical idea that it is in community that the self can flourish, may be aware of this concept, that the human self is most itself when we focus on other selves. So I'll make a couple of other observations here before closing. First, that Christ's healing is often centred on the dispossessed, and that should clearly have implications on the way in which we live out our faith. And second, that Christ doesn't get bogged down in judgmentalism when it comes to the marginalised and the excluded. He just gets on with the business of reconciliation and restoration. In this passage, we are confronted with a picture in the temple of the Old Testament and the New. The Old Testament had over 600 rules. The New Testament focuses on two, love of God and love of neighbor, or distilled further to focus on our relationships. So let me close by saying this. However important work is, however important our professional lives are, we do need to be present in our day-to-day -day relationships. I got that wrong, badly wrong, this summer with my family. And I pray that you don't make the same mistake with those you love. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>